it. You know how they say you can't squeeze a square peg into a round hole? Well, it seems the folks at the Robocop program didn't get that memo. They tried stuffing Alex Murphy, a top of his class, church-going, world's best dad type of guy into a hunk of metal, and then seemed surprised when he didn't go all Terminator on them. It's here we dive deep into the mysteries of the paranormal that our creepy planet has to offer. If the art of storytelling captivates you, then this channel is your perfect destination. If not, then I don't know what to tell you. Please remember to like and subscribe to our channel. It's a small click for you, but for us, it really means a lot. That this whole circus unfolds in a world that makes the Mad Max universe look like Disneyland. The evening news is a doomsday bingo and nuclear war, environmental disasters strikes the ozone layer doing a disappearing act. The cherry on top. Detroit, a city so crime ridden, it makes Gotham look like a gated community. Hell, even robbers aren't safe. They're more likely to get robbed themselves before they can even count their loot. Enter stage right at OCP. This tech behemoth is slowly turning Detroit into its own personal playground. They've got their grubby mitts all over the city, controlling everything from law enforcement to finances. And boy, do they love their toys. Their latest gizmo, a 2 and 9. Nine. Sounds like a tax form, right? Ends up being more of a mechanical Tasmanian devil than a military robot. It goes haywire during a demo, turning one poor executive into a human smoothie. This gory mishap gives the corporate whiz kids the green light to start playing Frankenstein. Enter stage left, Alex Murphy, freshly transferred to the Wild West, I mean, Western Detroit. He winds up in the crosshairs of Clarence Boddicker, self-proclaimed crime lord and resident psycho. Poor Murphy's first day on the job also turns out to be his last. Uh, he gets ambushed by Clarence Boddicker's goons. Loses an arm, gets pronounced dead, the works. But wait, there's a twist. The medics pull a Hail Mary and manage to save his brain. When Murphy wakes up, he's seeing the world through a camera lens that looks like it was picked up at a garage sale. And to add insult to injury, the engineers decide to save his left arm. I mean, talk about adding a touch of humanity to a walking, talking piece of machinery. Got a bone to pick with the engineers. He ordered a 100 synthetic Robocop, but the engineers decided to throw in a bit of organic flair. Given the fact that Alex willingly signed his corpse over, it's like he gave them a free ticket to a Pimp My Corpse episode. Robocop, despite looking like he got booted out of Transformers for being too bulky, is actually pretty agile and quick on his feet. All thanks to his creators, his armor that's some high-grade Kevlar-coated titanium. This guy could give Iron Man a run for his money. But here's the kicker. By the time we hit part two, poor Alex has been whittled down to just a couple of flesh bits, not even enough to pass as a Halloween prop. Then comes the plot twist. The manager, probably in one of his I want to play God moods, orders the amputation of Alex's left arm. This could mean that whatever was left of Alex's human bits didn't make it into the final Robocop design. Unlike that druggie in episode two who got more human bits added on, Alex had more of his taken away. It's like a morbid game of operation with the big question being how much of Alex is actually left in there. Well, the brain, for one, it's been chipped and tweaked for optimal performance, as we can see in RoboCop 2 in the 2014 remake. In RoboCop 3, OCP brings in Dr. Lazarus, who makes it his mission to play with RoboCop's emotions, or lack thereof. Two decades after the original film's release, the creators finally dropped a bombshell. The face we see under RoboCop's helmet, that's Murphy's actual face, peeled off his corpse and slapped onto a robot's head. It's like some sort of twisted Hannibal Lecter meets Cyborg situation. And the makeup team did such a bang up job. It looks disturbingly realistic. And yes, that's his face. All right, that bullet mark on his forehead. It's a little souvenir from his encounter with Botica. Underneath though, it's all metal, no warm, squishy stuff. The creators wanted to explore the concept of retaining a spark of humanity even when everything else has been wiped clean, imagine Murphy looking in the mirror and seeing a robot staring back. Talk about an existential crisis. 
be in the 2014 remake, they decided to be a tad more generous with Murphy. They kept most of his head along with his lungs, heart, thorax, and left hand, kind of like what they did with Kane, the neighborhood junkie. So here's the deal with RoboCop's armor. It's not your everyday suit, my friend. You're, we're, we're talking about a badass piece of tech made from titanium, the stuff they use to build spaceships and superhero suits. And to make it even cooler, they coated it with Kevlar, the same material they use for bulletproof vests. You know, just in case RoboCop decides to take a bullet or two for lunch, it's like wearing a tank and a bulletproof vest at the same time, but with a lot more style. Now, let's talk about what makes RoboCop tick. He's got this fancy neural link that connects his organic bits with his robotic body. It helps him control all those fancy gadgets and gizmos. But here's the kicker. It also allows him to feel pain. Yeah, you heard that right. Even though he's mostly machine, he still screams like a banshee when someone rips his robotic parts off. And get this, the pain isn't just a nuisance, it's actually part of his programming. You see, RoboCop can't just go around arresting the big bad guys at OCP. If he tries, he'll be in for a world of hurt. Like seriously excruciating pain, it's like the universe's way of saying, nah buddy, you can't mess with the big shots. And But here's where things get even weirder. When RoboCop has dreams about his past life, guess what? He feels that same agonizing pain. It's like his brain has this secret defense mechanism that kicks in whenever he sees things he shouldn't. Talk about a double whammy of pain and secrets. Now, um, let's talk about the scientific side of things. In the 2014 RoboCop remake, they did a pretty neat job explaining some of the technicalities. They hooked him up to his spinal cord, even though he doesn't technically have a spine anymore. It's like plugging in a USB cable to your brain, but instead of transferring files, it's waking you up from a robotic slumber. And here's a fun fact from the original film. RoboCop had a whole digestive system going on. Yep, his organic bits needed some good old nutrients to keep them running smoothly. He even had a fancy blood circulation system and a Japanese-made artificial heart. Talk about high-tech cuisine delivery. But wait, there's more in the remake. They gave him a pair of lungs too. Cause you know, even cyborgs need to breathe. And let's not forget about the original RoboCop who also had some sort of respiratory system going on. Gotta keep that oxygen flowing, my friend. Oh, and one last thing, RoboCop doesn't have an excretory system. So you might be wondering how he gets rid of all those unnecessary substances in his body. But let's just say it's a mystery that even the best scientists can't crack. Maybe he's got some secret robot magic going on, or maybe he just doesn't need to pee. Well, all right, let's... So in the remake, they showed us how they cleaned up Murphy's blood, like he was some sort of messy eater at a fancy restaurant. And here's the kicker. They also took away his emotions. Talk about a real party pooper. They did it by installing these fancy dopamine absorption thingamajigs. But guess what? Murphy's brain was like, nah, I'm not having any of that. It overrode the whole system, just like a rebellious teenager breaking curfew. Those scientists couldn't explain it, probably scratching their heads like a bunch of confused monkeys. And here's the thing, you can't stick a human into a machine and then complain when he starts making human-like decisions. It's like expecting uh, a cat to bark like a dog. It just doesn't make sense, my friend. In the original trilogy, things get even more confusing. Is RoboCop a man or a machine? It's like trying to figure out if pineapple belongs on pizza. Some people say yes, some people say no, and it's never ending debate. But in the remake, when uh, Murphy died for the first time, mind you, he, he got a taste of his emotions and boy, was he horrified. Turns out he became a monster, a subhuman, like he just stumbled out of a bad horror movie. Poor guy had to live with that realization. Talk about a major downer. In the original, Murphy had some serious memory issues. He couldn't remember his family, but he still had some feelings for them. It's like having amnesia, but still feeling guilty about forgetting your mom's birthday. It's, it's a weird mix of curiosity and emotional detachment. 
And you know what? Even though RoboCop can't fully feel like a human, there's still a tiny spark of humanity left in him. At least that's what the actor who played RoboCop said. But the movie never really dives into his emotional struggles or identity crisis. It's all about duty, duty, duty. Like he's Captain America with a metal suit. So is RoboCop a man or a machine? Well, it's as simple as this. His buddies call him Murphy. The rest of the world calls him RoboCop. It's like having a split personality, but with a cool nickname. And hey, if you enjoyed this little commentary, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. And thanks for tuning in, my creepy companions. The cabin. I don't think so. Ah!